We're at Jane Sanders Enerfit uh, renovation project, uh, passive house in uh, Brooklyn Park Slope. And we're gonna do a Karsten tube test to see how absorptive the masonry is for driving rain. The Karsten tube has 10 centimeters or four inches of water column on the wall, which simulate this driving rain. We're gonna put this on the wall with a plumber's putty and we do one on the mortar joint and one on the face of the brick. Once we fill this up with water, we're gonna let the first 30 seconds lapse and that will simulate the first wetting of the wall. And then we want to see that water levels still stay pretty stable or only lower a little bit every 30 seconds. If it goes in too fast, it means the brick is very, very absorptive. In a normal house, it's not so, such a big problem because the wall is heated from inside and the water will just be heated out of the wall. Once we start to retrofit these buildings very airtightly and very well insulated, this heat's no longer available. So we need to make sure that the brick is not so absorptive so it doesn't get that wet in, a, in the event of a big uh, rainstorm. Of course, interior vapor control is important as well, so we don't load the inside of the wall with, with uh, vapor. And so that's why in this house we use cellulose and in tallow, a smart vapor control on the inside to keep the wall dry as well. So let's fill up these tubes, 10 centimeters of, uh, of water column. And then we're gonna wait 30 seconds. So now 30 seconds has lapsed, and we can see actually the brick is very non-absorptive. Uh, the masonry itself, uh, the mortar joint is a little bit absorptive. So we'll fill uh, this one on the mortar joint up with 10 centimeters of water column, 4 inches. Again, simulating the driving rain. We're going to wait the first 30 seconds. First 30 seconds we'll always see a little bit of wetting, a little bit of absorption on the brick because it's the outer face, but then we really want to make sure that after that, after the first 30 seconds, um, the water stays pretty stable, only drops, you know, 16 to around 8 every 30 seconds. Goes in very slow. And now we're going to st start our first 30 seconds. We want to do this for about 5-7 minutes to really simulate uh, the, the driving rain event. So there's long-term wetness of the wall. So we, we got a little bit of absorption here on the mortar joint. So here we have a good example of what, uh, yeah, what freeze tall damage looks like and why it's happening. So we have here a stoop and you can of course see that a splashback from the stoop will hit this wall and here this brick is somewhat deteriorated. And we can see on the other side we don't have that. It might be because that brick gets more sun. Uh, also, then next to the stoop, we have deteriorating brick um, and really a lot of damage. Uh, if you want to figure out why is that happening, uh, it could be there's some water coming from the stoop, falling down. But probably an attributing factor is that this is where the hallway is downstairs. There's probably no heat in that hallway. So this is kind of simulating a, an insulated wall of a building. Upstairs, there's no issue. So there's sufficient heat there, there's sufficient airflow, that brick dries out. Uh, there's sufficient heat from the inside of the building. Down here in the hallway, no heat, kind of in, insulated wall mimicking damage in the wall because the brick can no longer dry out uh, fast enough after it gets wet. 